This episode of Kobe Explains is brought to you by Exter. Get 40% off a premium Exter wallet by visiting the link in the description. Boeing is kind of on a roll. After years of turmoil, the company closed 2022 strong. In the past few months, Boeing scored a pair of multi-billion dollar deals from United and Delta. Meanwhile, its flagship 787 program resumed deliveries after more than a year on pause. But just last week, Boeing earned its biggest win yet. Congress has chosen to exempt the 737 MAX from new regulations that would have required its cockpit to be redesigned. Had this regulation stood, it would have cost Boeing millions of dollars, but it would have also improved the safety of this troubled jet. So why did Congress give the MAX a pass? And more importantly, did Congress make the MAX more dangerous in the process? Let me explain. Real quick, folks, if you didn't know, I just started doing YouTube full time. It's a big, big step, and I could really use your help. I've just revamped my Patreon, and my patrons will be getting all sorts of awesome, exclusive content in the coming months. So if you value my work and want to support me on this journey, please consider becoming a patron. Thanks. First, a little bit of background. In late 2018 and early 2019, the 737 MAX suffered two famous and fatal crashes. Subsequent investigations found that the plane's MCAS system played a key role in each. MCAS is designed to automatically pitch the nose of the plane down when it's in danger of stalling. But during both accidents, the system activated in error, causing the plane to dive unexpectedly and leading to a loss of control. Now, MCAS is a brand new feature on the 737 MAX. It hasn't appeared on any previous Boeing jet. As such, it was not well understood by pilots at the time. As the accident sequences were unfolding, there was no obvious way for the flight crews to pinpoint MCAS as the source of their plane's erratic behavior. In response to these accidents, Congress passed aviation safety reform. Part of this reform stipulated that, by 2023, all new aircraft must feature a modern cockpit alerting system called ECAS if they wanted to receive FAA certification. ECAS helps pilots to easily identify malfunctioning systems, which is good for safety, but its implementation would have been bad for Boeing's business. You see, the MAX family is split into four distinct variants. Two of those variants, the 737 MAX 8 and MAX 9, have already been certified without ECAS. Meanwhile, the MAX 7 and MAX 10 are still in the midst of flight testing. If the new rule stood, both would have needed to be redesigned to incorporate ECAS, otherwise they'd never be allowed to carry passengers. Ultimately, this would have splintered cockpit commonality across the MAX family. Pilots who fly the MAX 8 and MAX 9 wouldn't be able to fly the MAX 7 or MAX 10 without needing several hours of additional instruction. This would have cost airlines millions in training fees and decreased the overall appeal of the MAX family. It's no wonder then that Boeing so desperately sought an exemption, and many were surprised when they actually got their wish. After all, the regulation was a direct response to the MAX crashes. So why did Congress just give the plane a free pass? Well, I want to dispel one misconception right off the bat. Congress did not succumb to threats made by David Calhoun. In an infamous conversation with Aviation Week, the Boeing CEO stated that he was ready to cancel both the MAX 7 and MAX 10 unless Congress changed its tact. This statement came completely out of left field, and it seemed to carry a sinister warning. Help us out or we'll hurt your constituents. You see, the 737 MAX is constructed by hundreds of different suppliers scattered across the US and the globe. Canceling these MAXs wouldn't just hurt Boeing, it would directly impact jobs across the country. And nothing scares Congress more than the prospect of their voters losing jobs. Six months after Calhoun made this statement, Congress decided to let the MAX slide, giving the appearance that Boeing wielded unfair leverage over the legislature. But here's the thing. Boeing was never in a real position to cancel. This threat was entirely hollow. If you don't mind me going on a quick tangent, let me explain why cancellation was always a preposterous notion. Take a closer look at the MAX 7 for instance. It's by far the worst selling MAX variant to date. 
With just 286 of the type on order, it accounts for a mere 5% of the Max's backlog. Seems like it should be super easy to cancel, right? Well, no. That task is made frankly impossible thanks to Southwest. You see, Southwest is the single largest 737 customer ever, and it's arguably the most reliable customer Boeing has. Central to the airline's success has been the 737-700. Its compact size allows the airline to achieve high load factors between smaller cities, which is vital to the success of its point-to-point -point model. But those jets are growing old, and the airline desperately needs its replacement, the MAX 7, in order to see continued success. Losing the MAX 7 could cripple the airline, and Southwest couldn't upsize its MAX 7s to the MAX 8. That plane has too much capacity to be the backbone of its fleet. Without the smallest max, the airline's load factors could drop and its profitability could plummet. To avoid this catastrophe, Southwest would have to fill the void with another comparably sized jet, and the only one that fits the bill is the A22300. Now, in early 2021, there were actually reports that Southwest was kicking the tires on the A220, and if the Max 7 were cancelled, Airbus and Southwest would surely pick up where they left off. All of a sudden, Boeing would find itself at risk of losing its most important customer. We can paint a similar picture with Delta and the 737 MAX 10. Now, Delta isn't the biggest MAX 10 customer, but it might just be the most important. You see, its relationship with Boeing has been tenuous in recent years, and the MAX 10 appears to be the only thing holding the relationship together. Delta actually used to be a Boeing loyalist, but that's changed over the past two decades. In that time frame, Delta's added over 400 Airbuses to its fleet, while rapidly phasing out its Boeings. And nearly all of the jets it has on order are of the Airbus variety. The lone Boeing jet that Delta still has in its backlog is the 737 MAX 10. Now, the airline hopes to use the MAX to replace its aging 757s, and like Southwest, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Delta to swap to a different MAX variant. The MAX 9 is too small to be a proper 757 replacement, and Delta can't afford to sacrifice the 757's capacity. Without the MAX 10, Delta would be forced to order more A321neos, and in such a scenario, Boeing loses Delta completely to Airbus. In summary, canceling the MAX 7 and MAX 10 would sour Boeing's relationship with two key customers. At the same time, it would leave the A22300 and A321neo completely unchallenged in the market. It's now clear that Calhoun's comments were little more than an empty threat. Canceling the Maxes was never in the cards, and Congress probably saw right through this bluff, and thus didn't respond or react to Calhoun's statement. So if threats from Boeing were truly ineffective, why did Congress give the MAX a pass anyway? Well, Boeing certainly lobbied hard in other ways, and its status as a major government contractor almost certainly helped them out. But at the end of the day, lawmakers will point to three key factors to justify their decision. First off, this move is a win for the American consumer. Right now, travelers are feeling the pain of sky-high fares. Now, fare price has a strong correlation to fuel cost, and those costs have been soaring. The sooner airlines can deploy newer, more efficient jets like the MAX, the sooner prices could fall. And waiving regulation means the MAX 7 and 10 can wrap up flight testing quicker. Second, this is a win for American carriers. It's not exactly a secret that the industry is struggling with a pilot shortage. If the regulations had stood, airlines would have had to pull their pilots out of the cockpit to get them trained up on the new variants. This would complicate crew scheduling and make the shortage worse. Now, airlines don't have to worry about training specifically to the MAX 7 and 10, and they can carry on as normal. Now, you may have noticed that both of these reasons ultimately boil down to money. It saves money for consumers and saves money for airlines. And I know what you're thinking. This seems like a recipe for disaster. After all, Boeing's focus on cost reduction was a big reason why two maxes crashed in the first place. So why is Congress putting money over safety? Well, they're actually not. Enter reason number three, the most controversial of all. Congress gave the MAX its exemption because it might actually make the plane safer. Congress's new safety regulations are certainly well-intentioned, but they could prove detrimental in the case of the MAX. You see, the 737 family has been around for an incredibly long time, and its cockpit has remained largely unchanged for decades. 
As a result, its functionality is deeply ingrained in the minds of tens of thousands of pilots worldwide. Now, our brains can become confused when they encounter unexpected information or stimuli, and there's a chance that ECAS could surprise and disorient pilots during an incident, since they're so used to flying 737s without it. This problem is magnified when pilots constantly switch between max variants. Southwest pilots, for instance, fly three, four, even five different aircraft a day. And since max cockpits look identical regardless of the variant, it can be easy to lose track of which exact one you're flying, and whether your plane has ECAS or not. It's the opinion of the Southwest Pilots Association that maintaining a common cockpit environment across all MAX variants makes for the safest operations, and the pilots unions for Delta and United agree. Now, it's important to note that not everyone shares this view. For instance, the Allied Pilots Association, who represents pilots for American Airlines, contests this line of thinking. On top of that, one of the most famous pilots ever, Captain Scully, has expressed his skepticism as well. He rose to fame after landing a stricken A320 in the Hudson River, so it's safe to say he knows a thing or two about how to manage an accident. But despite all of these conflicting opinions, one thing is for sure. This kind of public debate is progress. Go back a decade, and you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone in the industry talking about safety this much. But now, we're having open, honest conversations, improving awareness and affecting policy. But regardless of what side of the debate you're on, there's no denying that Boeing's a winner here. And hopefully, several years down the road, we'll look back and realize that safety was a winner too. So what do you guys think? Did Congress make the right move here? Let me know in the comments section below. And thanks again to Exter for sponsoring today's video. Exter makes high quality, ultra thin wallets. I've been using a bulky wallet for a while, and I've refused to switch to a thin one because I like the feel of premium leather. But Exter makes their wallets super compact while also using high quality materials, like real leather. In addition, their wallets are designed in a way that makes it super easy to access your cards. Even better, Extra designs wallets with an optional space for air tags. And if you're not in the Apple ecosystem, Extra has their own trackers that fits seamlessly in their wallets, meaning you'll never lose your wallet again. Right now, my viewers can get 40% off Extra wallets during their New Year sale. Simply visit the link in the description and use the code KobeExplains at checkout. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.